In this video, we'll talk about the importance of sleep in controlling diabetes. You may wonder, what has sleep got to do with diabetes? Sleep only affects the blood pressure, isn't it? That we all know. What is not known? If you sleep between six to eight hours a day, you remained healthy, your diabetes was well controlled, blood pressure was well controlled, you don't get heart attacks. In fact, people lived longer. Don't get into bed at least two hours after your dinner. The digestion has not started, all the blood has now gone into the stomach and at that time you are trying to produce sleep also. So this is not good. Just before they go to bed, screen time, they are always watching something. And then this reflectance, it's giving you a lot of radiation, is very bad for the brain. And that's one of the most important reasons. So all these hormones are actually opposing insulin, not allowing the insulin to work. So if they increase, the insulin is pushed out. Five tips, what I call as sleep hygiene. And if you follow these five tips of sleep hygiene, it will definitely improve the quality and the quantity of your sleep. So what are these five tips that I want to tell you? Whenever we talk about diabetes not being controlled, people normally come up with two things. Doctor, I have not followed my diet for last one month. I had a marriage or I have not been exercising at all. But in this video, I am going to talk about one of the commonest causes of diabetes not being controlled. I am Dr. V. Mohan and in this video, we will talk about the importance of sleep in controlling diabetes. You may wonder, what has sleep got to do with diabetes? Sleep only affects the blood pressure, isn't it? That we all know. What is not known is that sleep is very, very important if you want to keep your sugar under control. In fact, today it's become a separate science. It is called the science of chronobiology. We don't call it sleep, we call it as chronobiology. I've been doing a lot of research on this and some very important papers have been published in the last couple of years and I wish to tell you about that. Number one is how many hours should somebody sleep? We did the study in 21 countries and about 150,000 people and the answer was very clear. If you sleep between 6 to 8 hours a day, you remained healthy, your diabetes was well controlled, blood pressure is well controlled, you don't get heart attacks. In fact, people lived longer. Those who slept less than six hours, let's say five hours, four hours, three hours, their mortality rates went up, which means they tended to die because they're not getting enough sleep. The body is not resting. The blood pressure goes up, the sugar goes up, heart starts failing and lots of problems come. You may say, what is this thing about eight hours? What if I sleep nine, 10 hours? For a child, it's okay to sleep for 9, 10 or even 11 hours. But studies have shown, including our own, that if you sleep more than 8 hours, if you really need more than 8 hours sleep, probably you are having some disease which you have missed. Maybe your sugar is not under control, maybe your thyroid is uh, playing up, something is happening. Otherwise, why should an adult consistently need more than 8 hours sleep? We are talking about an average. So between 6 to 8 hours, we found is the best. Sleeping longer than that and shorter than that, both are not very good. What about the time when you go to sleep? There are people who say, I want to watch TV, I want to watch videos, I my, my late night hours is what I love. So I'll go to bed at two o'clock and then I'll get up at eight o'clock. So I'll get my six hours sleep. So you said six hours, I should sleep. I'm sleeping for six hours. No, your chronobiology has been changed. Why did Nature produce day and night. During the daytime, we are meant to be active. And at night, 
We are meant to rest and to have sleep. And that's why the day-night cycle, not only in human beings, but also in animals, plants, everywhere, the whole of nature depends on this chronobiology. So what did we find in our research? What we found was that people who went to bed between 10 p.m. and midnight, they did the best. If they started going to bed earlier also, say 9 o'clock, 8 o'clock, 7 o'clock, 6 o'clock, every day, something is wrong with them. Again, they have some disease. If at 6 o'clock, 7 o'clock, you have to go to bed, no adult does that anywhere in the world. And so there's something wrong. Please go for a checkup and find out what is happening to you. After 12, 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock, when people go to bed, their sugars are never under control. And they get up in the night often or they are disturbed. Most often they have some tension or some mental stress or worry or something which is disturbing them. And that prevents them from sleeping and their diabetes gets out of control. So the message that I want to tell you today is that sleep is not given the importance that it should be given. If you have diabetes, give most importance to your sleep. See that you get between six to eight hours of sleep. Get into bed between 10 to 12 and make that a routine. Because if you do that, your chronobiology sets in such a way. You may say all this doctor, but I don't get sleep. So what do I do? You're telling me 10 o'clock, get into bed. I go there and then I try to sleep and up to 2 o'clock I'm not sleeping. First of all, you should find out whether there's anything wrong with you, any particular problem, discuss it with your doctor and I'm sure we can find a solution. But I would like to give you five tips, what I call as sleep hygiene. And if you follow these five tips of sleep hygiene, it will definitely improve the quality and the quantity of your sleep. So what are these five tips that I want to tell you? Number one, try to get into bed at the same time every day. Now one day if you get into bed at 9 o'clock and next day at 12 o'clock and third day at 1 a.m., your body will be wondering fourth day what, what time you're going to sleep. Whereas like clockwork, 10, 10.30, that is your sleep time. Your brain is already expecting it and it will be thinking, ah, 10.30, this person is going to sleep now. So that's the first sleep hygiene. Second sleep hygiene is, don't get into bed at least two hours after your dinner. Some people, what they do, they have their dinner at 10 o'clock and then try to get into bed by 10.15. Don't do that. The digestion has not started. All the blood has now gone into the stomach and at that time, you're trying to produce sleep also. So this is not good. So have an early dinner. Most Indians, what they do, they eat after 9.30, 10, 10.30, 11. Try to have your dinner by 7.30, 8 or 8.30. This will help to keep your sugar also under control. It will also give you good sleep. Number three, your brain must think that your bedroom is a place meant for sleep. So don't have loud music going on in your bedroom, very bright lights. These things tend to distract the brain and the brain must think that this is a quiet place where this person has come to sleep. So that's also very important. Number four is watching television shows which are very violent, something which is going to disturb you, you know. If you watch that at night, that will keep on going in your brain and how will you sleep? You will only be thinking about that. Try not to watch TV at least an hour or hour and a half before your bedtime. And if you watch, watch something which is funny, something which is very light, which doesn't disturb you or doesn't make you anxious. That is very important. And the fifth and the most important is the use of cell phones. Today, to stay for five minutes without a cell phone is very difficult. And that is why new terms have come up like detox, digital detox. These are, not, they are all unheard of, say, five years ago. Today, everybody is talking about that. The addiction is so strong, just before they go to bed, screen time, they're always watching something. And then this reflectance, it's giving you a lot of radiation, is very bad for the brain. 
and that's one of the most important reasons why people don't sleep so remember these five tips for sleep hygiene which i told you about and definitely both the quality and the quantity of your sleep will improve for people with diabetes it will be a major step forward to get your sugars under good control now how does this relate to actually sugar going up when you start sleeping irregularly or not sleeping enough changes occur because from the brain itself the hypothalamus there are a number of signals going down and all your hormones go completely out of control most of the hormones in the body except insulin increase the sugar so you have adrenaline noradrenaline also called as epinephrine and norepinephrine your cortisol your growth hormone all these are hormones which tend to increase the sugar there is only one hormone which decreases the sugar and that is insulin so all these hormones are actually opposing insulin not allowing the insulin to work so if they increase the insulin is pushed out and the insulin production also goes down the way it is secreted is altered and its action is also impaired and that is why sugar levels start going up this happens when you have stress also so remember that along with your diet and along with your exercise add into your list that i will sleep on time and i will get enough sleep and you will find that your sugars come down very easily in those who have pre diabetes you will even be able to reverse the diabetes so in the diabetes reversal program about which i'll be talking in subsequent uh, videos in this channel we will be extensively talking about how lifestyle plays a very important role not only in controlling your diabetes but also in preventing your diabetes and also in reversal of your diabetes so stay tuned to this channel and watch for other videos where we'll be extensively talking about other tips as to how to keep your diabetes under control what are the various lifestyle factors which affect diabetes how in your workplace you can look after your diabetes if you just pay a little bit of attention so until i see you in one of my subsequent videos in this channel take care and stay safe goodbye